for another Tune It Up Tuesday. Today we are going to discuss some preventive maintenance for our guitars as well as how to protect them. Keep these looking good, sounding good, playing good. That's the name of the game, right? And they do become very personal items to us because you'll have a favorite guitar and you don't want anything to happen to that. As well as, I will say, some of these, now this is a 2004, this is a 2008, so if something catastrophic happened to one of these, it isn't like you're just going to walk out and replace that easily, okay? These guitars have some age on them, and once they hit 20 years old, then they should start sounding really good, okay? But like I said, some preventive ideas that I have, I will share with you. And if something I haven't mentioned in this video that you want to share, leave it in the comments. Maybe somebody can learn something from you, and we most certainly appreciate it. Let's get started with the video. I hope you guys like this one. Thanks for watching. As I said, these things, they become extremely personal because once it becomes your favorite guitar, then you obviously don't want anything to happen to it. And I will say, again, uh, the older these things get because of the way the wood shrinks and... <clears throat> Make sure that clip come off of there. The way the wood shrinks and everything gets seeded up, they say that it, it's going to sound its best after 20 years of age. Now, I don't know that. I don't. It's a. That's more of a builder's point of view. That. Now, again, this is a 2004. And I, I always keep these things in the case if I'm not playing them. Uh, even in a controlled room or, or something like that, as the air conditioner, the heater, whatever is kicking on, ambient temperatures in the rooms is always fluctuating as well as moisture, humidity. So <clears throat> if I'm not playing them, now if, I, if I've got something I'm working on and I know I'm going to use these over a, a period of a couple of days. Yes, they do stay out of the case. I, I will put them on the uh, guitar rack, and then when they're ready, I, I can use them. And once I'm done with them, I always wipe these things down, put them in the case, and, you know, it, it's a, again, it's a testament to how long they will last you, or you can pass them down as heirlooms. This is a 2008. And I do keep these things looking nice. And I, I get everybody wanting an aged guitar look as well. Uh, I know we've all spent some extra money of, for paint on guitars that has been aged on purpose. So I understand that, right? On the other side of that, from a collector's point of view, honestly, when you open the case, they see something like this setting in there, then, you know, you've, you've got their attention. Now, one thing I have learned, this is just a little paintbrush from any hobby kit, and you can actually get right around your tuners, as well as down and around your pickups. Now this is camel hair, so this is not abrasive whatsoever. You can get in between the strings with this thing, right down into the intricate parts of the guitar, and you can clean these thoroughly. And I don't have to do this every time, but I will do, you know, at least twice a year go through and give these things a thorough cleaning um, and make sure that I haven't missed something. There'd be nothing worse than to open your case and see rust forming on your hardware that you've already worked years to keep clean, right? Now, I, again, these guitars has all been bought brand new. So, since 2004, I've done my level best to take care of this one. Now, another thing I have, and <clears throat> this is Ernie Ball guitar polish. You guys use whatever brand. I mean, Gibson makes it, Fender makes it, uh, Duncan or Dunlop makes it. So, anything, now this has Carbonuba wax in it, but any manufacturer that you choose, it's probably going to do a pretty good job for you. Now, rather than spraying this directly on the guitar, I always just grab my uh, scratch-proof rag here, and I'll spray it right onto the rag. 
I let that soak in just a little bit. Ooh, that stuff smells good. And then you can just while it's in the case. Gives you a nice support. You can start wiping it down. This does condition your fretboard. And it really makes the strings easy on the fingers. So it having that wax in there as this stuff starts to dry. But I will flip my rag over uh, to the dry side now and I'm going to buff this thing out to a polish. I do try to get as much of the wax polished in as I can. That way the next time I open this case up this thing's going to look sharp. It's going to be ready to play. And again because we're in the case you can actually get back to the back of the neck as well as your tuners, top of the headstock. And I'm telling you, the next time you drag this thing up, you're ready to play. So is the guitar. And these little these little paintbrushes here, again, you'd be amazed at how much stuff you can't really see as to what's stuck in there. So the magnets on your pickups, you, you always get those. Um, uh, small pieces of dust from the pick that you're using if you're using Teflon picks. So this will take care of all that. All right, Cleans them right up. Now, as far as <clears throat> keeping these things in, in great shape, another good tip is guitar stands. And something I want to mention here, this is a Hercules guitar stand very well made stand and not a cheap stand however on these particular ones I bought all these in the same year there was a problem I think with the molding on the uh, spring retention handle here that allowed this thing to be adjustable okay and I'm sure you can see that so as I set my Les Paul down one day I was putting it in the stand here, which when you fold this down, it, it actually locks around the headstock and helps keep that onto the stand. Well, I'd set it down and just started to walk away, and I heard something break. And I turned around just as the Les Paul, the, the bottom of the guitar here, and I had my strap on it, so it sat right down on the floor against the strap button and started to lean forward because once the weight of the guitar comes off of this uh, neck holder here then it opens up so as the guitar hit this thing sprung forward and we was just about to lose the Les Paul now I have repaired this I just simply drilled a hole in it put a nice bolt and wing nut into it and then that way I know now that this thing can't ever move but my point being is sometimes even the best gear can get away from you you know, I didn't want that thing to hit the floor. Absolutely not, right? Another thing about these cases is they do protect them against uh, your guitar against temperature change. So, this would be the way it's stored. And what Gibson suggests when you enter a new room, you brought this thing out of your car. Let's say, for instance, you're running your air conditioner and it's 100 degrees outside but it's 72 degrees in your car and you've had 30 minutes 40 minutes to get to wherever you're going to the gig to play these things okay so this guitar even in the case has cooled down to that temperature now you immediately open your car door you walk out into a hundred degree temperature then into another climatic controlled building this thing is going to change alright so what Gibson suggests is when you get to where you're going to open this thing up and get it out they actually say open the case up just a little bit like this and let just a little bit of air in there and let it set now if you have the time that will help protect your lacquer finish on these guitars temperature change is what causes the fracture cracks in your finish now age helps that along as well but if we go from 100 degrees into 72 degrees immediately and then you do that repeatedly throughout the life of your guitar you are going to experience some stress cracks in your finish and possibly even in the wood depending on what kind of climate you are 
opening the guitar up to. All right. So something to be aware of. And again, it um, these cases will protect them from that. Just allow them a little bit of time to acclimate to the room that they're going to be played in, and you'll do fine. Now, if we're like the superstars guys, and somebody else is taking care of your gear, then it doesn't matter, right? They're going to do, either do it for you, or it, it's just going to be what it is. But personally, I don't have a guitar tech, so I think I'll just take care of it myself. <laughs> now, another thing I've learned over the years, I'm going to bring this up here where you guys can see this pretty good. And these guitar strap locks are made by Dunlop. And you can pick these up. I don't know, they're probably around 12 bucks now, maybe even a little bit higher. But all of my guitar straps have the same uh, strap locks on them. That way, I don't have to have different uh, straps that will fit the guitar should I just want to grab something off the shelf and start playing it. Now, when you put these on your guitar, if you're new to how these strap locks work, you have a little button back here you need to push and that inserts into the strap holder your strap button here you can see see the hole there and then like I said you have to push in order to get it in to the uh, strap button and then once you get that inserted you're gonna pull back on that a little bit and make sure the lock engaged because you do not want to just set it in there there's been you know several guitars hit the ground simply because they didn't pull against that to make sure the strap lock actually activated um, and you don't want that to happen to yours now something a lot of us don't think about as musicians specifically if I'm going to a gig I'm excited about playing and I'm, you know most of the time you're in a hurry to get there but you're going to stop and eat and let's say you grab any fast food place that is out there and you have french fries hamburger you know whatever what all of us eat the salt on your hands from fast food or any type of food can absolutely devastate a set of strings in one session okay so when you get to where you're going you've got your guitar ready to come out of the case etc might be a good idea to wash the salt off of your hands it, it actually, in, in my situation, because my skin tends to stay a little dry anyway, but washing my hands allows my fingers to move across the strings easier as well. So, <clears throat> but that can save you uh, a set of strings, like I said, in, in one session, because of the amount of salt that you have uh, had on your hands, and then you grab your guitar, obviously, down on the saddle, the bridge, you're, you're going to, uh, all of that, will deposit on there and salt is extremely corrosive. Now another big one is when you are putting your guitar on your guitar stand I always try to pull up enough slack to where if somebody who has walked up on the stage or wherever your guitar is stored at on the uh, guitar stand that if they do get their foot around your guitar cable they can't pull the guitar off the stand. Okay, so leave yourself some slack in the end of your cable once you actually set this thing on the guitar stand and, you know, children or, or whatever, however it happens, uh, if, you, if your guitar cable is tight enough and they trip across it, it will pull it right off the stand. So you have to be careful there. And that's a simple pointer uh, for anybody and any style of instrument that has a cable hooked to it that you're going to walk away from and leave it unattended for a few minutes. Now another thing I refrain from is wearing shirts with buttons on them or large belt buckles because you can absolutely tear up the back of these guitars. Now that's again just a personal preference. We all have our style and look that we want to achieve as well. It is as, as much about us as it is the instrument. So I'm just telling you that on the back of these guitars these things have never seen a button. It's always a, a cotton t-shirt of some type. And again, these things will last a long time. And I'll tell you, even wiping your tuners down. Now you know, as I pass this down through the family as an heirloom, 
if whomever has this after I am done with it will take that type of care of it and should they ever choose to get rid of it if they open whomever is looking at it to purchase opens the case for the first time and sees that it's probably going to be a pretty good conversation right you know that's another thing too the case itself these things are the cases are starting to become very expensive I mean, you're talking anywhere from $120 to, to $400 or $500, depending on how much you want to spend on one. So, these cases are no longer cheap either. But there we have it, guys. I hope some of this information helps you, and I hope it helps extend the life of your guitar, specifically your favorite guitar. I know we've all got a couple of them that sets around, and occasionally uh, we dig it out and play it, but it may set in a case for a year or so. And again, um, it's, it's easier in the case than it is setting up. And specifically, another thing to mention is sunlight. If you're hanging your guitars next to a window somewhere to where it's in constant sunlight, that's hard on these finishes of these guitars. And yeah, they are a work of art. We all enjoy seeing them and want, to, want other people to experience what we see when they come over. On the other side of that, we want them to last a while too, right? So, I hope this video is helpful for you in some way. I want to thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Keep playing out there. I'll tell you what, there's nothing better than on a rainy day, play music. It's fine.